What's up guys, two videos in one week. I think you can uh, thank my quarantine for that, uh, but it's great. I'm loving being able to push out content to you. This is a part two, a follow up to the video that I posted just a few days ago, the 2020 Small Video Light Challenge. If you haven't seen it, I would watch that video first. It's more of a head to head comparison of these lights. Uh, the link will be in the description of this video, obviously. This is more of a deep dive into each individual light. And also there's a little bit of comparisons that I had to take out of the last video because it would have been 40 minutes to 50 minutes long. And nobody really wants to watch that much content about small video lights. I mean, I do, but you know, a large audience probably doesn't. So with that, I have the weight comparisons and also the build quality comparisons in this video. And yeah, that's about all I got to say about that. Let's roll that bumper. So first off, we're gonna take a little bit deeper dive than the first video, a top-down view where you can really get to know each light. So the first light on the list, obviously, is the first light on most of these lists, the Aperture M9, the OG, the one that showed us you can take good quality lights and put them into small packages, just like they did here. They have a built-on magnetic diffuser, which I love, and high quality, high CRI LEDs. Now it's only in daylight, but they do include a couple of gels, one of them being a tungsten gel that just goes on in the back like that. Not the best solution, but it was a solution and at this time there wasn't anything other than this on the market. It doesn't have any screw holes or any way to mount it to anything, so they included this little guy where you have to attach it here and then you can either have a cold shoe mount or quarter 20. But yeah, overall, Aperture M9 always gets an A plus for me because it's the OG. Next up on the list, the GVB Gear GVB PL12, which is always just too much to say. Anyways, GVB said, Aperture, what you can do, I think we can do better. Instead of step up, it's got a nice little wheel here to turn up the brightness. It too is only daylight, but it has more daylight LEDs, still comes with that diffuser, still comes with gels. I mean, what more do you want? It still does not have a way to mount to anything except for a hot shoe mount, but it comes with this weird little thing that you can put in there and then you have a hot shoe or quarter 20, anything you may want. So yeah, that is the GBB PL12. I hope I never have to say those letters again. Next up is a light that I used to also call a M9 copier, but now I see it as its own innovation. It comes instead of a plastic body, it's got a nice metal body. It has an LED screen on the back, which is very nice. It still only spits out daylight, but it has even more LEDs, but they are much smaller LEDs. But the color accuracy is awesome. Now again, since this is only one color of LED, Instead of having one of those weird gels, this one has its own tungsten snap-on diffuser, which I always find nice. I love magnets. I love when people implement magnets to their fullest extent in situations like this. So yeah, that's the Sakani LED X21. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot about the Sakani. It's the first time that you see a mounting option actually on the light itself. Now you can go. Next up, we're taking another huge step forward in small video lighting, and we, of course, are talking about another aperture light. If you can't see it with the blur, I am not going to fix your sets. It obviously is not my fault that I didn't fix the focus. It has to be your fault. Anyways, this is the Aperture MX. This is the first light so far we've talked about that is bi-color, meaning you can have both daylight and tungsten available on here. It also has a diffuser with magnets, only I don't like this one very much because they have to be exactly aligned. They get bumped like that all the time, and that's slightly annoying. The Aperture MX is also the first one of these lights with USB-C, a trend we will see in the near future. Now, basically half of this light is just one big heat sink, which means it can really get brighter than anything that came before it. It even has a booster button, which can really push that envelope, and nothing was around like that at the time when Aperture innovated like this. Aperture is always pushing the envelope, which I love because then other companies are trying to catch them, and I'm always down with that. Off you go. Aperture never wants to be outdone, so it also wants its second screen time to show you. It also has a quarter 20 mount on the light itself, meaning you can mount it without anything external. Now you can curl away. 
Next up, we're jumping a little bit out of chronological order to talk about the Sakani X21 Pro. This is a Sakani light that is bicolored, still has that lovely LCD screen that we love to talk about in the back of it right here, but it's just kind of an X21 that's bicolored, not any brighter, just, you know, you can do different colors, which is awesome. It also has the quarter 20 mount on the bottom, also has the USB-C upgrade, and yeah, I love all these upgrades, and it kind of has the elevated magnets like the Aperture MX does, only it has this sheet of glass, so they don't stick out as far. Glass or plastic, I don't know what it is, I don't really care, but it is a good light, bicolor, Sokani X21 Pro. Right now is the part of the video where the LumQ panel would have came in, except for the fact that I found the exact same light for $50 cheaper, so we're going to talk about that one, the Fotix M180. The Fotix M180 is a bicolor light with an LCD screen on the back that is much slimmer than the lights we've talked about before it, and I think the reason is is so they want it to be about the same size as your cell phone. You can also charge your cell phone, which is a new feature I haven't seen, with one of these ports here. It charges out of this port with a little dongle that comes included that I don't have right now because I'm unprepared. And then you can charge it in with either micro USB or USB-C. So this light has a lot of versatility, and I like when these light companies take a chance. Again, it's the exact same light as the LumQ panel, but $50 cheaper is always going to win in my book. Next up is the winner of the 2019 Small Video Light Channels, the Bowling P1, and this light still is awesome, even a year later. It's RGB and bicolor. I've told you a lot about it, very sturdy. It's got this awesome little mounting accessory here, and it's got a myriad of effects. It's got a slide to open button, USB-C, and there's just all sorts of things I can say about this light, but the key features that you guys wanna hear is it's bicolored, meaning that you can go anywhere from 2,500 Kelvin to 8,500 Kelvin and anywhere in between. Also, it's RGB. And this was the first RGB small video light on the market that I found. And that's what got me to make it the winner last time is its versatility. Also, it's got all these really cool effects. Effects are always welcome. And you can actually scroll between the effects too. So yeah, that is the bowling P1. Next up is a light that really doesn't have another light like it on this list. That is the Aperture MW. Aperture's first fully waterproof light. I know it's not fully waterproof. It only goes down to a certain amount. I'll put that on the bottom because I don't have that information here. But this light is awesome. It's a daylight only chip on board. The only chip on board light in this small video light showdown. And let's see what we got here. We have many different lights. This is one of the brighter lights on this test. We will find out later just how bright it is compared to the other ones. It does have effects. It comes with its own diffuser that you can wrap in front of here and can hold gels such as tungsten gels. So yeah, this is a very, very versatile light. One that anyone should have in their light package, the Aperture MW. Next up is another one of my favorites, the Pilot Fly Atom Cube RX1. Another light that's RGB and by color, and that seemed to be the theme of late 2019, early 2020s lights. The one thing I don't like about this light is its mounting mechanism. No matter what I do to tighten that up, two seconds later it's going to be flopping around and I just don't like that. But that's about the only thing I don't like. It also has a LCD screen on the back. Like I said, it's bicolor, so it goes all the way from 2,500 Kelvin up to 8,500 Kelvin. It's got an RGB mode with hue and saturation on it, or you can actually dial in exactly how much red you want, exactly how much green and blue, or you can go into the effects. And now we have different effects we can go through here just like the other lights. And we have different options for those lights. Here's a police light, different versions of that. And yeah, the cool thing, here's some fire. The cool thing that kind of sets this light apart is it has an app that actually works on Android and iPhones both. And that's the Atom Cube app. It automatically detects the light and then you can come in here and do whatever you see fit. Or you can go into, you can control anything from this app, and it's a very intuitive app. 
and I love it. So it's got different ways you can control it. And for me, that just sets this light apart from the rest. Again, that's the Atom Cube RX1 from Pilot Fly. The next light we have up is the Aperture MC, which is one of the main reasons I'm redoing this video. This was a big talking point for Aperture in the last year. This is an RGB M9, basically, that comes with a lot of cool features, like this really cool diffuser, this box diffuser that it comes with. I really like the diffuse light that comes out of this thing. And yeah, again, like I said, it's bicolor, RGB. Really, it's got effects. Really easy to figure out. And it's got really nice color cast. One of the really cool things about this light is the app control. It has a Citus Link app that can both be controlled with an Apple phone and now Android. So you just start it up. You add your light in, make sure your light's in the scene, and away we go. And you can control multiple fixtures, but right now I just have this fixture running. You can control it how you would with gels. Let's say we're on a tungsten light without CTB, but let's say you want the look of a tungsten light with full CTB, not fully daylight, but close, this can replicate that look, or vice versa with full CTO, or without, or an eighth of a CTO. I really like that. It's got a source type link, so you can really dial in your color science. And then the normal color temperature from 3,200 all the way up to 6,500. One of the really cool things that sets this app apart is the color picker. So all you do is, let's say you want to take the orange off of this tape measure. You would push the picker button. It lights up. You put it over where you want it to pick up. Bam. Now you have matched the color to the best of its ability. This really comes in handy when you want to have light sources match. And yeah, also there's magnets on the back and I love magnets. So yeah, that's the Aperture MC. One of the most versatile lights I've ever seen is the Pixel G1. Speaking of which, I just gave one of these away to a lucky viewer last week. The Pixel G1, again, is RGB. I think we're sensing a theme here. By color, but you can also charge your phone. It's got five volts in and out from a USB-C right here on the light. So you can theoretically charge your phone just straight from the light. It's got quarter 20 mounting threads on three sides out of the four, and it's just a very, very versatile light. It's got the LCD screen on the back. It goes from 3200 Kelvin up to 5600 Kelvin. So the max is gonna be somewhere into the 43, 4400 Kelvin range. It also has effects just like the other ones. And yeah, it's a really great light. That again is the Pixel G1. Last but definitely not least is the Falconized F7 pocket light. This is the tank of these RGB bicolor lights if you ask me. Again, it comes with a LCD screen on the back. It's nice enough to give you a sticker which I kind of haphazardly put on the back of here that tells you all of the effects that are on this light. And it's just really easy to work with. Full RGB. It goes from 2500 Kelvin all the way up to 9000 Kelvin. That's the widest range yet for these lights. And it's just an easy light to use. Easy to go through RGB and easy to scroll through effects with the above sticker on this light. It also can be mounted in any direction with this little mounting thingamabob that I don't really know what to call it. This mount, let's just call it a mount, huh? With this mount, and it's got a USB-C port right here on the top. That is the Falconize F7 pocket light. Next up, we're gonna see how much these things weigh and which one of these lights is the lightest. The heaviest light out of all of these is the Falconize F7 at 309 grams. Then comes the Atom Cube RX1 at 292 grams. 
Then the Aperture MW at 291 grams. The Aperture MX, that little light that's a tank, at 282 grams. Then the Bowling P1 at 263. The Pixel G1 at 204. The Fotix 180 at 190 grams. The Sokani X21 Pro at 158. The Aperture MC at 128. The original Sukani X21 at 111 grams. And both these lights coming under 100 grams. The GVB, GVB PL12, I hate saying that light's name, coming in at 90 grams. And the Aperture M9 at a whopping, or a minuscule, I should say, 71 grams. So the next thing we're going to compare is build quality. Now, build quality is not something that has a specific number that I can rank, but it's all my personal opinion. And I'll do my best to tell you why I put each light where they are. Bringing up the rear is the GVB PL12 because it's all made out of plastic. I don't like the mounting thing they gave us to mount it to a stand. And compared to the other lights overall, it's just not built as sturdy. Next up is the Aperture M9. A lot more sleek and a lot more nicely designed than the GVB. But again, it's all made out of plastic. It doesn't have a self-mounting port. But it's still pretty sleek, and I like that. That's why it beat out the GVB. Then we move up to the Sakani X21 Original. Now we're getting into lights that are all made out of metal. It's got a little LCD on the back. It comes with two magnetized diffusers, one tungsten, and there's a screen that protects the LCDs if nothing's on there. Next up is the Sokani X21 Pro. Much beefier than its original X21. It's got multiple screw mounting ports, and it seems like it wants to be an Aperture MX without putting the beef into it, but it's still a very nicely well-built light. Next up on the list is the Aperture MX, which is an absolute tank of a light. And the reason it's a little farther down on the list is because I don't like how the diffuser goes on. It's got these little magnets that stick out, and anytime you bump it, it goes like this, and then you can't put it on flush, and it just happens all the time. It's also pretty heavy for a light this small. When you compare it to the Aperture M9, they're almost the same size this way, but this one is like three times heavier than this light. So yeah, other than that though, it's a tank. I love it. Uh, one of the first lights that came out with USB-C on it, and it's got a very strong mounting port, quarter 20, can't go wrong. Next up is the brand new Aperture MC. I actually really like how this is built. It's, I don't know, it feels plastic on the back, but metal on the front. I like that it has magnets. Anytime you can put magnets on something, I will always be a fan of it. I really like the way they built this diffuser. It's got an LCD screen on the top. It's just a well-built light. Next up is the light that put the LumQ panel out of business, the Fotex M180. This light is so sleek, but so sturdy. It's all metal, got the little LCD on the back. It can charge your phone, which is amazing. And it's just so slim and sleek that I just love the way this light is built. The Fotex M180. Next up is the Atom Cube RX1. And why this is a little bit lower, even though it's all metal, it's a tank of a light, but it's lower than the other RGB panels on this list because of this stupid hinge. No matter how much I tighten this, it comes loose within two seconds. That's a terrible way to make a hinge. But other than that, this light is very well built. It's got an LCD on the back. It's got built-on diffuser, multiple tactile buttons and knobs, really well-made built light, but I hate this little hinge. And fourth place is the Pixel G1. Just like the rest, it's made out of all metal. But the thing that separates it is the fact you can charge your phone with this light. Then the RGB that started them all, the Bowling P1. Another all metal LCD light with the Fusion built in on the front. LCD button on the back. Multiple knobs and buttons. And this really cool mechanized looking way to mount your light on different kinds of stands and kind of wherever you want. The Bowling P1. Then comes the beast of the RGB world, the Falcon Eyes F7. It also has this cool little mounting thing, but it's not as complex. It just gets the job done. You rotate it wherever you want to go. It's all made out of metal. You got an LCD screen on the back. They give you a sticker that you can put on the light to tell you all the effects. 
It's got an indented area so you don't accidentally hit the buttons and knobs. They really, really thought about how they wanted this light to be presented when they built this light. Falcon Eyes F7 from Pocket Light. And the best light on this list for me is the only one that I actually kept the case for because this case is so awesome. The Aperture MW. Again, this is a tank, but just doesn't feel as clunky as the MX, and it's waterproof, so everything has to be built up to standard when you can put this light down 30 meters in the water, and it still looks great. Really good light. I've put it through its paces. It's just built like a tank, and I love it. The Aperture MW wins the comparison for build quality. Well, that's it, guys. Everything you should know about any of these small video lights as of, you know, the beginning of April 2020, you should know now with the last two videos. Again, if you haven't watched the last video where I put everything head to head, click the link in the description down here. I almost pointed over there. I don't know of any links over there, but down in the description, there'll be a link. Also, another thing I got to get straight. I said there was two chances to win two different prizes from Loom Cube in the last video. That was a mistake. I was supposed to do it over two videos, so there's one more chance to win a Loom Cube package today. If you link in the description, follow Loom Cube on Twitter and like and subscribe to this channel. One more thing, I will be dropping my new short film, Small Gains, on March 31st, so be on the lookout for that. Oh, that's a lot of things to get off my chest, a lot of things I have to get out into the world. I am just a humble paper salesman with a new fake leather coat who likes to remember to say, it's not a competition. Let's all rise in this business together. You guys stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.